90s, fashion and football, Manchester, the place to be. But in 1994, Manchester City had to come to Cardiff and make their own way down Sloper Road and experience the full Ninian Park passion. Since that time, I've had so many people come to me and say I was there on that day. Like, there must have been like 30 or 40,000 people there. That day, Eddie May's Barmy Army were in full song. You're next to your Manchester City players in their, in their shirts and they're playing top flight football. And you glance at them and you could see fear in their eyes. Because at the bottom, there's this bright light and they've got to go through that light and they can hear the atmosphere. And you're going down and it's getting louder and louder. And when you go through the entrance of it, the old stadium gets up on their feet, just letting you know that today could be our day. I remember running out on that, on that day and just, you know, get that, that feeling down the back of your neck, you know, and you just can't help it, you just goosebumps and you don't really want to warm up, you just want to go straight out, straight into the game. And Nathan Blake's certain to be a key character in this game. The place was alive with Barmy Army and all this business and it was hard to get things across to players and and, and, and things like this. And yeah, when, when you're playing, you can just hear like an, you can hear the crowd, but it's just like an echo. It's like, you know, it's almost like, um, like an out of body experience. It doesn't feel the through properly. The ears on the back of my neck, they, they used to go up when, when they used to sing that, like, you know. And that, I'll never forget my, my five years there, never. When I was about six years old, um, I come down with my, my mum, dad and my brother and watched the game against Man City. Um, you know, I just wanted to be on the pitch and wanted to be a Cardiff City footballer. I remember Cohen getting the ball from a throw-in, deep, and throwing it inside to me. I just went to him, threw it inside to me. Um, and I tell you now, I didn't, didn't know what I was going to do from that moment in time. And I remember turning away from goal and thinking, I wonder if he thinks I'm going to shoot. I bet he doesn't. Turned with the ball inside, and I thought, I'm just going to try and bend it. The rest is history. <laughs> Sweet turn by Blake. He's still got it. That's a curler. And that is a bright, magnificent goal by Nathan Blake. I just stood, put my hands in the air. I just, you know, there you go. It's like, that's for you. It took a magical goal by Nathan Blake to, to win that game. Um, but the team on the whole, they, they give everything that day. And that's it. A famous, famous result for Cardiff City. He was a great player as well, and he was great for Cardiff. And you know, it was one of the best goals I've seen at Union Park. And, you know, it was just great that he was, I was there to watch it as well. It's, it's a beautiful thing. So. It's a, it's a proud thing for me to carry and to, to have. It was, without doubt, one of Ninian's greatest days. And in the next round, another Terrace legend almost kept this their FA Cup Ninian dreams alive. The upfield, Gary Thompson down for Stantz. Oh, that's a fine goal by Phil Stantz. But despite Stantz's goal, it was Luton Town who went through. Eight years later, the Bluebirds were at it again. The day League One Cardiff City produced one of the biggest FA Cup shocks in recent times. The 6th of January, 2002, Leeds United, Premier League leaders, multi-millionaires, walked into Cardiff's cauldron of noise. It was brilliant. It was brilliant because it was like facing, you know, people like Arsenal, Liverpool, Man United right now because they were um, in the top four. <laughs> To actually be Pitt Mowitzki's Robbie Fowler was special for me. Um, Mark Maduka, Rio Ferdinand, Alan Smith. We were given no chance, you know. It's, it's an occasion, you know, not expected to do anything. And we'll clap them after and, and brilliant, you know, it's a great occasion and everything, but it didn't happen that way. As John Charles led the teams out, the Leeds United chairman looked on nervously from the grandstand. It was uh, a strange day. Certainly the atmosphere at the time was uh, interesting. Um, some would say intimidating. Definitely affected the Leeds players. I mean, um, I've heard that some of them wrote in their books that they've uh, compared it to Galatasaray. The stadium was full of warm up, and you looked around and you could sense it that we fancied it and they didn't really fancy it. But Leeds took the sting straight out of the Ninian crowd. And uh, that's the opening goal. It's Mark 
Paducah and Cardiff City have really gifted Leeds United a goal. But when Leeds had Alan Smith sent off, the game changed. Step forward, City's captain. It is Kavanaugh with the free kick. Oh, what an equaliser from Graham Kavanaugh! When he ripped it in the top corner there, it was, it was special. It was, I mean, Graham could do things like that. As City chairman Sam Hamann wound up the crowd, Leeds United's world was about to crumble. I think Kavanaugh just whipped one in. Sort of went over my head. And I can remember Leo just getting a slight head and knocking it down. West is there. I think it was David Batty who just sort of deflected off the line, back to the sort of six-yard box. And just, I can just remember it just falling straight to my feet. And it was just perfect. I was just hoping that he would hit me and go in. <laughs> Fortune West is there. It's in. God, it has scored. It's Scott Young. I can remember this delight. I mean, it was amazing. I didn't know where to go, to be honest. I mean, at one stage, I think I was going to take my top off. But then realised uh, no, that's not the best thing to do. And headed off for the Grange End Bob Bank side of it, where all sort of my friends were. And, in that corner there. Well, I don't really remember the celebrations uh, afterwards, to be honest, I just felt sick. In my hometown club, and to be at the top of the Premier League on the day, and for me to get the winner was a, was a special occasion. Delight for Young, misery for Ridsdale. My most vivid memory is uh, obviously of uh, the previous chairman here, Sam, walking around the pitch, uh, but I just felt sick, and all I wanted to do was to uh, get out of Cardiff and take the team back and, and pick up the pieces. And who'd have thought, six years later, Peter Ridsdale would have left Leeds and become Bluebirds chairman, and that Robbie Fowler would sign for Cardiff City. That same season, City made it to their first FA Cup final since 1927, but lost 1-0 to Portsmouth.